it, it was encouraging to hear. So, I mean, it was encouraging to hear that, that, that you know, that number one, they showed back up and, and that they did. And then number two is that they did get something out of day three. And, and that, you know, man, what is that concept or that it's an old school phrase, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. In this case, learning is in the eyes of the beholder, regardless of, of again, how, how well I thought I did or didn't do that, you know, thank God people can still learn in spite of me is a blessing huge blessing. Welcome to the EQ Gangster Podcast, where you will learn practical tools to grow your mental and emotional health and intelligence to be the best version of yourself, both at work and at home. It is real, raw, and transformational. The journey of emotional growth isn't easy, but it's worth it. I believe in you. EQ Gangster, what's up? Buenos dias. So on my way to, of course, BJJ therapy, after reading my Bible, it is 0530 in the morning. It's still dark outside, as you all can see on YouTube from my YouTube watchers. This episode is going to be the follow-up to failure. Follow up to failure and then learning. Follow up to failure and learning. I had a recent episode, and it may have been the previous one, about how I had thought that I catastrophically failed. That's dramatic. On day three of my boundaries workshop that I'm finishing up tonight. And, and again, I was being dramatic about the catastrophic failure, but I, I I thought I had completely choked. I thought it was terrible. I, you know, I definitely was fairly, maybe not fully emotionally hijacked and emotionally triggered, but I was definitely feeling unpleasant, uncomfortable emotions that I was not able to compartmentalize. And normally, I feel like I do a pretty good job of compartmentalizing my emotions. I was not able to on day three. And again, so I thought, man, it was terrible. I I choked. It was a bad night. And I was hoping, as you heard in the podcast episode, if you listened to the previous one or one of the recent ones, that I was hoping that the audience was going to come back on day four because of just how bad I thought it went on, on day three. So... I shared that on day four, which was yesterday, as the folks started to show up, I'm like, wow, hey, just want to thank you guys for showing up today because I, I honestly was a little concerned that you all were going to show up just because of how I, I bombed last night. And then one of the at- attendees who's actually in the EQ Mafia, she's a member of the EQ Mafia, and has just been a phenomenal inspiration just with her own emotional growth journey. It's been encouraging to me. Her name is Carrie, phenomenal lady, and has just really taken this whole emotional intelligence bull by the horn. And, you know, ever since she kind of discovered it, has, has really has kind of approached it the way I have. Like she has just been very intentional at devouring all things EQ. And so she's just growing tremendously. But anyway, she said, you know, after I said, Hey, I'm so sorry about last night. I completely choked. Thank you guys for showing up today. You know, she really helped give me some perspective. She's like, look, you don't, you don't, you don't tell me how, you know, how the, how day three went. I determine 
whether or not there was value in it. Not you. You don't tell me whether or not there was value in it. I tell you whether or not there was value in it. I'm the, I was the attendee. I was the one, I was the consumer of the content of the course. And it, you know, and it really challenged me. It, it really challenged me. And, and then another lady, super lady, she is in, she's one of the leaders in the same homeschool program that we use called Classical Conversations. Her name is Debbie, super, another super lady. And she said, no, well, even if you felt like it was not effective or didn't, you didn't think it was good, God still has a way of, of teaching us lessons if we're open to it. You know, she said, how many sermons have you listened to that weren't all that great, but they, but there was one thing that God dropped on you as a result of the, of the sermon that may or may not have even been in the message. So, and I thought, wow, that's another good point. So it, it was encouraging to hear so, I mean, it was encouraging to hear that, that, that you know, that, number one, that they showed back up and, th and that they did. And, and then number two is that they did get something out of day three. And, and that, you know, man, what is that concept or that it's an old school phrase. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. In this case, learning is in the eyes of the beholder regardless of, of, again, how, how well I thought I did or didn't do that, you know, thank God people can still learn in spite of me is a blessing, a huge blessing. This episode is sponsored by Classical Conversations. Since 1997, Classical Conversations has been equipping families like yours with the resources to homeschool with confidence following a classical curriculum rooted in a Christ-centered worldview alongside other families in a local community, homeschooling is doable with Classical Conversations. Check out classicalconversations.com forward slash Gibbons for more information. Again, that's classicalconversations.com forward slash Gibbons, G-I-B-B. Because -B. that's one of my pet peeves if I feel like I wasted the audience's time and then how God works two two or three ladies who attended the you know who've been attending the workshop sent me some really unsolicited really thorough specific positive feedback after day three, which is, again, another just how God, man, he just, he knows, he knows what we need when we need it. And, and man, and, and, and in fact, the two ladies that gave me feedback didn't even hear the, the part of the workshop where, because they hadn't come on yet, where I was just bummed out in how I performed on day three in, in the message and how I delivered the message. And even the message that I delivered, I just didn't feel like it was, you know, again, valuable, on point, you know. So I, how God knew what I needed. He, he didn't have to do that. He could have allowed me to get a couple of good haterade messages. You know what I mean? Like, Hey, no, but I think your course sucked and it was terrible, but he didn't. He, he, he allowed me to get a couple and I hadn't gotten any other feedback in, in, in an email, in a direct email until those two emails that I got yesterday which was after day three, which also, check this out, 
this was not originally intended to be part of the of the episode, but this is really ties in perfectly. As I shared in a recent episode, I yesterday I had my my monthly massage by this high speed massage medical massage therapist. She's a neuromuscular massage therapist. Again, 36,000 bodies, 36,000 hours doing her craft. And she said, and I don't even remember the context of this, of the message, but she said, man, Noble, you know what's fascinating is I average six to seven massages a day. And some days I am just not mentally, emotionally, physically wanting to do all six or seven massages a day. And and somehow God knows and he will literally have a couple people call and drop off my schedule. Uh, completely unsolicited. And then conversely, if I end up having a couple cancellations and I'm like, man, I really need to, to, to do a couple more appointments she said inevitably I will get a couple folks out of the blue to schedule in in the in the slots where those original people cancel and I'm thinking okay that's cool you know that's probably happened I don't know a handful of times out of her 36,000 bodies so I asked her I said Oh, you know, that's, hey, that's kind of neat. You know, the guy does that. Like, how often has he done that? Without even skipping a beat, she said, oh, no less than thousands of times. She said, I, I'm not even joking. Every single time when I feel too smoked or, man, I need a couple more appointments, I, she's like, I, it, no less than thousands of times that has happened to me. He knows exactly what I need when I need it. And I thought, wow, that, that's amazing. So then it also challenged my faith. Like, man, where's my faith at? (laughs) Lord, increase my faith. Like the disciples prayed, increase my faith, Lord. I just thought that that was just super timely story based on God allowing, you know, those super people to, provide some really encouraging specific feedback completely unsolicited them not knowing that I I was sucking like a Kirby vacuum the day before you know so anyway it, it was really neat and then and then the learning piece is well I mean I guess that's I was going to go into a little bit more details about the learning dynamic but I'm I'm, I'm not going to other than what I've already shared about about don't judge someone else's learning. If 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 they learning is in the eye of the beholder, if they feel like they got something worthwhile, who am I to say, well no you didn't? Like again, even if I felt like I choked, and maybe I did choke, but if they were still able to take away learning lessons, man, that's in my in my opinion as a as a person who delivers content on a very, very, you know, consistent basis, twice a week for the last three years now, man, that's a, that's a blessing. And, and, and the other analogy I, or I used was, you know, in the, in the Bible, and man, this is in the Old Testament, and I'm not going to remember the story, but God literally used a mule, a, a, a legit mule jackass to speak to the mule's rider because there was the, there was a, a guy riding the mule and the guy riding the mule was not understanding what God was trying to communicate to him and so literally God used a mule <laughs> this jackass to communicate this message to this guy in a way that the guy would receive it 
And, you know, so I'm like, well, if God can use that mule, he can use this mule too. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm, anyway, so that was really encouraging. So I just want to kind of give that follow up to failure. And then, you know, kind of challenge myself. Like, okay, well then what was that about? Was I, I mean, clearly I was emotional. I was emotionally hijacked. You know, what could I have done differently? Oh, and then, and then Debbie, the lady that I mentioned earlier, she said, you know, cause I was kind of beating myself up about, man, I just, I choked last night. They're done. She's like, look, dude, what I tell my kids and she's a homeschool mom, you know, a lot of home, kids and stuff. If my kids say one negative thing about themselves, they've got to follow up with three positive attributes or affirmations about themselves. I thought, wow, that's, <laughs> I would be saying three positive attributes a lot if I, if I stuck to that, that kind of rule, which is, again, is, is also telling and revealing. Okay. Like, okay. I still have a lot more room to grow in that area. And I wonder like, how does God feel about me beating myself up on a regular basis? How would I feel if my daughter beat herself up on a regular basis? I would not, I would not dig that because our kid's amazing. Does she have stuff to work on? Absolutely. She's also amazing. And so I would not want her to diminish the gifts that God has given her by her talking negatively about herself. And maybe even though some of those gifts that maybe she sees or doesn't see. So I, I anyway, that's just obviously another area that I'm clearly still working on. Learning is in the eye of the beholder is my big takeaway. And then how are you doing at learning, at picking out, even if it's a, 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 a pile of, of crap, how are you doing at intentionally looking for the lesson, the kernel of, of, of truth, beauty and goodness in an otherwise average or mediocre spot. How intentional, how good are you at learning? And, and really digging deeply into, you know, some of those lessons and looking for those lessons actively. That's what I love about being a learner. That's actually one of my top, maybe I think it's like my, maybe my sixth strength or maybe some of the top five is is learning. So I love learning. So I'm like nonstop Easter bunny, always looking for the Easter baskets or the Easter eggs, the lessons that God has for me in life. Constantly. Constantly. Okay, God, where's another lesson? Where's another lesson? Where's another lesson? What else can I learn? What else can I learn? In, in everything I do, everything. So, and, and then that's another challenge for me too, is how can I how can I be more intentional at, at my learning journey also? Are there areas in my life that I've gotten complacent and I've stopped learning in? What's the last thing I've learned in each area of my life? Thank you all so much for joining me. And July 10 to 14 is going to be my next workshop, my third quarter workshop, summer workshop. July 10 to 14, and it is going to be on burnout and self-management tools, the concept of burnout and self-management tools. That's going to be 6 to 10 July. Thank you for rating, reviewing, sharing, subscribing. If there's a particular episode that's really been impactful, and maybe you've shared it with a friend, family, or, or colleague, or coworker. If you ever need any, any coaching, if you ever need any speaking engagement at your company, at your organization, training, EQ assessments, EQ coaching, please don't hesitate to reach out. I've got a, a number of different options and packages and stuff that could 
add value to, to you or your organization. Emotionally healthy leaders help heal other people emotionally. Emotionally healthy leaders create emotionally healthy cultures and organizations which create optimized and maximized results, outcomes, performance, and engagement. Have an amazing, amazing day.